I'm Eve Lyon, Recovery Navigator for Career Source Research Coast Recovery Works. Recovery Works is an initiative supported by the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity. My focus is to connect social service and treatment service providers in the judicial and law enforcement systems to the workforce development community with a goal of improving employment outcomes for people with substance use disorder. Employment provides important structure as well as meaningful purpose for all people. For people in recovery, employment supports long-term recovery associated with better quality of life, greater self-esteem, and happiness. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, opioid use disorders are highly prevalent among criminal justice populations. According to data from the U.S. Department of Justice, approximately half of state and federal prisoners meet criteria for substance use disorder. Each month, I invite guests to join me in a conversation about recovery, second chance employment, and in particular, how people in recovery are making great contributions to our workforce. Today, I'm pleased to welcome two guests who are representing organizations that bring resources to support second chances focused on helping people move on with their lives. Today, I'm thrilled to have beside me uh, Jennifer Sideritz, who is the Career Source Research Coast Career Center Manager, and welcome. How are you? Good I'm evening. I'm wonderful. I'm so happy to have you with me today. Thank you for the invitation. I know the mission of Career Source Research Coast is to provide opportunities and improve lives. As the manager of the Port St. Lucie Career Center, can you talk about the services that are available to job seekers? Absolutely. Um, I want to first start by saying one of our main services are workshops. Uh, workshops are designed to help job seekers successfully navigate the employment search process. Our workshops will help you enhance your employability, skills, and achieve your career goals. We also have career planning. You know, if someone is finding themselves at a crossroads, our career planners are here to help you navigate through your career planning process by uh, performing assessments of their skills, determine and demand occupations in our area, assist in setting career goals, and they also recommend workshops to enhance the employability skills, refer you based on eligibility and suitability to training for with an approved area training provider. At Career Source Research Coast, we recognize your individuality and commit to assessing our clients in order to make the best recommendations. Career Source Research Coast conducts throughout assessments, reviews, and testing of our job seekers' interests and skills prior to referral to the employers. Um, one of our main objectives is to match employers with job seekers. We have access to local, state, and national job listings through the internet and job banks. Our facilities have internet access and office equipment to assist you with your job searches. Priority placement services are provided to veterans, and training opportunities are available through the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. The WIOA program provides eligibility and suitability candidates with a wide range of training opportunities. These training programs can increase your pay, job security, and also career satisfactions. We have apprenticeships. We have on-the-job training. Uh, we have classroom vocational training for in-demand careers. We also have the federal bonding program. We are participants of the SNAP and cash assistance. We've teamed up with the state to help individuals become self-sufficient. And we have the tobacco-free assistance program. So comprehensive. That's amazing. Yes, many, many, many services. Uh, and our doors are open for job seekers to come in, uh, especially if they're looking for a second chance. Uh, we can help them. We can guide them. We help with employers who are second chance employers. So if someone is seeking assistance with job search, job readiness, or training, what should they do? They should come into one of our centers. We have centers at the Port St. Lucie area. We have one in Garden City. We also have one in Marin County. And we have our Vero Beach location. So if they went to the website, uh, they could find the addresses for those facilities? Absolutely. We have our websites, our, we have our addresses there. We have our phone numbers. Um, they don't need an appointment. They can just walk in and they can meet with a career planner or they can get immediate assistance for job searching and get signed up with our workshops. So that's uh, careersourcerc.com is the website. 
And what are the hours that the centers are open? We are open Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays and Fridays from 8 to 5. And on Thursdays, we open 9 to 5. And are there some Saturday hours that I hear recently, or is that stopped? It did stop. Oh, we okay. had it up to December, was oh, our last month. Okay. And so, how long have you worked at Career Source? I have been with Career Source for 13 years. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In a variety of positions, I would assume? I have been. I started as a career planner for the Welfare Transition Program, uh -huh. um, and slowly but surely throughout the years, I've moved my way around, and I've, I've had amazing opportunities with the organization, um, and now I'm here at the Career Center, the Comprehensive Career Center in St. Lucie County. That's great. What attracted you to the organization? You know, the ability to help individuals to find employment. Um, I think sometimes we might take for granted the flexibility that we have with research and, and resumes. Things are changing so quickly that resumes are changing. Employers are, are always looking for something new and career source is ready to show individuals what they need to show their skills and, and be ready to find employment where they're looking for. That's great. What is the best advice that you ever received regarding employment or about building a career? You know, look for what you love to do. Oh, you can like never that. go wrong with loving what you do and you always do your best and put your best foot forward. And I think that that's been the best. I love helping individuals and it's definitely is shown in the way I've moved through this organization. Yeah, you're living proof for sure. Yes. So I understand that you're also participating in Leadership St. Lucie. I am. I just started this year. I've been through my second uh, meet. Really, really exciting uh, to meet individuals from the community. I'm originally from Vero Beach, so I am getting familiarized with St. Lucie County, and it's amazing the history in St. Lucie County and just opening up the doors for me to get to know the community. So um, I understand that Leadership St. Lucie um, is, is actually a class of 40 participants. Is that right? It is. There's about 40 of us, and uh, we are class 39. So Leadership St. Lucie has been around for 39 years. Um, as a matter of fact, I was in a meeting this morning and I heard a gentleman say that his wife was part of class three. I heard that. I was at the same meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Which is crazy because I'm class number 39 and wow. I am just super, super excited to meet individuals and just get to know other community partners that have uh, team up with us and, and make the best of our services. So I guess the class spends um, one day a month studying uh, specific aspects of the community such as education, area government, local history, economic development, health, human services, the environment, cultural awareness, and quality of life issues. So you really cover the gamut of all of the services available in the community. And what I hear from people that go through it and graduate is by the end of the year, you not only have some great friends and colleagues that you'll have for the rest of your life, but um, also really get an in-depth perspective of all of the wonderful resources that we have in our community. So yes. Congratulations on, Thank on you. being Thank able you to so participate much. in that. Yeah, I was super excited uh, when Tracy gave me, you know, told me to sign up and Brian. So I didn't lose a minute getting my application okay. in. Okay. <laughs> Those are your supervisors, I assume. Yes. Okay. Um, are there any events coming up at um, Career Source that we want to tell the community about? We I, don't. I understand there may be a job fair in May. Is that still in the works? We are looking to have a job fair. Uh, in May, May 18th, we okay. don't have a location and we haven't set uh, all the plans in motion yet. We're at the beginning stages of that. But I do want to talk about a little bit about our, our apprenticeships and on the job training. Okay. Right now we have funding for those opportunities and it's opportunities that you get that you're able to gain skills with employers and depending on what field you're looking to get into. And so I encourage individuals that are looking to to gain training on jobs depending where they're at in their lives if they maybe just got out of college and they, they need more experience to reach out to us and see what we have available. Our business services department uh, works with many employers that are giving opportunities within our community for job seekers to get in their foot in the door. Okay. So that website is careersourcerc.com. The phone number is 866-482- 4473. And for employers and businesses, um, you can reach a, a business consultant at business at careersourcerc.com. For job seekers, they can either uh, contact you directly, drop in, um, but also I think we like to encourage them to register and employ Florida. 
So that's employflorida.com, and there they can find so many resources that are available to job seekers. Uh, Please think about taking um, advantage of the apprenticeship opportunities. I know that I have met with so many of the service providers who are partnering with CareerSource to facilitate these training opportunities. They are amazing. They are all geared to help people advance their careers, both uh, financially and with skills. So absolutely wonderful, wonderful resources, and thank you so much for coming coming today and, and, and telling us all about them. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? You know, I just want to say, you know, the pandemic has brought uh, changes to everyone's lives. Yes. Uh, right now, the Treasure Coast is growing at a real fast pace. We're having many employers coming in. Um, and I encourage individuals to come into our centers and really find out what's out there. There's plenty of jobs available. And this is the time, you know, to try something new or to change career path if that's what you're looking for. We are here to assist individuals. And we are super, super excited about all the opportunities that are being brought to the Treasure Coast. Our business services department is working really hard to reach out to new employers and just bring opportunity, job opportunities here. Great. Well, thank you so much for highlighting all of those wonderful resources. It's careersourcerc.com. Anybody wants to reach me directly, I'm Eve Lyon, that's E-L-Y-O-N at careersourcerc.com. And I'm always willing and love to direct people. So if you're more comfortable just reaching me directly, then I'll get you to the right department or the right individual within the organization. So thank you so much for joining me this evening. And um, I'm going to now welcome my next guest, Jackie Yazzie. She's a resource specialist at the Circuit 19 Office of the Public Defender. And Jackie, can you tell us what that means? What are your duties? What what does a resource specialist do at the public defender's office? Hello, I'm happy to. A uh, resource specialist, there's a few of us, um, link people who are just leaving the jail or prison with resources in the community to help them get back on their feet. This could be food, housing, clothing, transportation needs, uh, child care needs, We try to cover the basics first and then possibly move on to education and other things later. You address like the very basic needs that somebody has. And then once they get stabilized, then we can talk about career planning and education and things like that. Wow. I don't think that, you know, a lot of people really know about all of the wonderful resources that are available in our community. And that's why we're having this conversation. So I know that one of them is something called problem solving courts. And uh, I wasn't even even personally aware of what that meant, although I have heard about mental health court and drug court. And so how does that work? Well, the courts do have diversion courts. Uh, They've got veterans court, mental health court, and drug court. Um, That is an option for, depending on which court you're referring to, for someone to actually participate in the court system without actually having to get arrested and do any time in jail. If they participate and it is successful, their charges will be dropped. It can be either as a diversion or sometimes as a condition of probation and they can take part in the court that way as well. Um, But once they finish, and the length may be different for each person depending on their participation, um, then they do get to move on and have those charges dismissed. And that's a wonderful option. Absolutely. So I understand that there are um, steps that an individual who has um, had the benefit of, of a diversion that they, they need to go through. And I know that some of them are uh, weekly check-ins. And if it's drug court, that it may involve drug screening on a regular basis. They're tasked with uh, going to weekly meetings and um, also uh, both around self-help, but also probably around job search. Some of these, um, they have job uh, employment requirements. Yes, some of them do. And your last guest yes. with Career Source is a tremendous help in that area. Uh, I'm partial to Career Source and I talk them up to everyone, almost everyone that I work with. So many great resources available. So we want to be sure that people who are mandated to find work are taking advantage of these resources. Absolutely. And it's been difficult with COVID. I know that Career Source prior to COVID, they had a lot of programs and full force. And I was recommending people leaving the jail left and right and was having a lot of success with that. And then everything came to a halt. Right. So it's nice for me to actually now see it picking up again. And I was in a career center yesterday, actually, for a meeting and um, they're full force. Yes. Yeah. 
yeah, they're back yeah, giving one on one. People are invited to come in and mm -hmm. really take advantage of of those um, all of the resources, both you know around job search, job readiness preparation, resume preparation, but also so many training opportunities. And so I think that if um, somebody is a participant in one of the apprenticeship programs, they're actually working and they're earning mm -hmm. money while they're uh, working on their education and getting their credentials. So we want to be sure that people do know about that. And they were doing that before as well, prior to oh, COVID. Oh, yes. yes. That, was a, that was a big plug for, for me with the population that I work with. I understand there's a program called Journey Forward. Yes. How does that work? Journey Forward is a wonderful program. It's a substance abuse program. It is within the St. Lucie County Jail. It's got a set curriculum, is a 90-day program. There's graduations. And this was prior to COVID. Things are a little different now because the jail, you know, shut down right. and continues to on and off. So we're seeing them on an individual basis right now, but we're still seeing them. Um, and we're doing one-on-ones with them as opposed to having a male dorm and a female dorm like we did before. But that's, that's what we're looking for. And these for. are for people working on their recovery. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Sub it's a substance abuse program. It's voluntary. Um, it, like I said, it's the 90 day curriculum. They can stay longer if they want. And then, um, when they complete the program, um, they're also assisted with job search activities Absolutely. and finding employment. Right. Yes. So they get a certificate. They get parenting classes, they get anger management classes, um, and then when they are released, yes, they get assistance with reentry. Right. So an employer hiring somebody who's a graduate of this program is definitely getting the benefit of somebody yes. who has learned uh, some really terrific coping skills, life skills, and um, ways to, to manage their life. Plus, they're living a healthy life because they're in recovery. And so uh, wouldn't they make a model employee? And when we talk about second chance employment, I really like to just encourage employers to, to be open-minded and, and consider giving that second chance for somebody who is really working on improving themselves. That's one of the favorite parts of my job is working with the second chance employers. I go to a lot of the job fairs and I I have a lot of success with linking up recently released inmates and Journey Forward participants with really great opportunities. I know it's such rewarding work. Do you have a particular story? If yes, I do. Um, one young man in particular uh, came into the dorm and I had known of him when he was younger. He went to school with my son and he was a handful. He was in a lot of trouble, I actually lived in my neighborhood, and I didn't allow my son to hang out with him, which was a problem in itself because they were friends at school. And he ended up in the dorm, and he didn't even recognize me when I came in um, to greet the dorm that day. And he realized shortly after who I was and was very apologetic, uh, he worked harder than almost anyone that I had seen in that dorm on his recovery. And it was hard for him because he had been in a car accident prior to being arrested and was recovering from that as well. He was in a neck brace. And when you say the uh, dorm, that's the dorm in the jail. Yes, the journey forward, yeah. substance abuse yeah. dorm, yeah. yeah. Um, he participated in the program, graduated from the program. But right before he graduated, I sat him in the middle of the floor. And usually when you get pulled to the middle of the floor, that's a a moment when all, you know, the spotlight is on you. Uh -huh. and it's almost like you might even be in trouble. Yeah. He sat his chair down with the back facing me, straddled over the chair, leaned on it and said, hit me. <laughs> <laughs> and all I did was tell him how proud I was of him. Aww. Uh, he amazed me. And that was, was one of the most uplifting moments that I've had. And I've had quite a few. He had mentioned during his time in the Journey Forward program that he really wanted to become a yacht captain and all the guys would, you know, laugh. Right. Or, okay, sure, sure. that's what's going to happen. Well, guess what? He's a yacht captain. Amazing. He had to go through a lot for it. He There's fire school involved and a, and a EMT and a bunch of other things that you have to do a hundred or maybe I don't even know how many hours yeah. that you have to have under your belt and not dock. You have to oh, absolutely be, run yeah. the boat. Yes. It's no easy task, and he did it with flying colors, and he's actually, I know it's a cliche, but he's living his best life, and he's doing an amazing job, and we stay in touch regularly. Oh, I love those that stories. That is one of my favorites. Yep, gets you up and gets you to work every day, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. So I know you talked about a lot of the resources that were available in the community. Most of those, when they first come out, is that through Life Builders? That Life Builders. 
Uh, I am very grateful for Life Builders. They're actually in the same building with me. Okay. I'm upstairs. They're down. Uh, Eric Corhammer, uh, who is the director of Life Builders, is a wonderful resource for me. Um, Life Builders helps with rental assistance, transitional housing assistance, utility assistance, uh, so many things. I can't even, when it's time for school to start, they do school drives for the kids' clothes and, and school supplies. Oh, work assistance with uh, boots and um, uniforms or tools, anything that you might need once you get a job. They're just a, a fantastic resource. So, um, again, through the Public Defender's Office, they can they get are, connected to um, Life Builders. And so I understand that the initial reason that the program was established was to help reduce recidivism, increase public safety, enhance the criminal justice system, and save lives that would otherwise possibly be lost. Yeah, Life Builders is definitely to help people become more self-sufficient. It's a hand up, not a hand out. Also, they have a little clause they like you to sign where you will give back at some point. That is the right thing to do. Absolutely. You know, somebody who's been helped, first of all, it's it's a joy for them to be able to give back and to help. And um, also to be a peer and a role model and an example in the community of somebody who has been uh, rehabilitated, improved themselves, moved on with their lives. So there are so many wonderful reasons to be able to, to give back. That is, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that they encourage that. And you have a personal history with Career Source yourself. I do. I love Career Source. Um, quick story. Uh, many years ago, I worked at Liberty Medical Supply. Okay. And they had a downsizing. They did. They, yep. had, they downsized in waves. And when it was my group's downsize time, um, I was on unemployment and I stayed on unemployment for the whole year. At that point, my, my two kids went back to school. So I was watching their children when they went back to school. So right at the end of the year, and I was thinking about going back to work, many of my former co-workers had, I got a call from career source talking to me about the TAA program and they said would you like to go back to school and i thought i don't know i'm probably past that point and i'll just go get a job and they said you really should think about it you want to go back to school cuz you can continue to stay on unemployment and go to school and we'll pay for it if that's something you would want to do and so you'd be crazy to not take advantage of a situation like that so i said i would love to looked at the the list of what what they were offering Criminal justice jumped right out at me. Okay. Um, I took that course. I graduated with a 4.0. The worker that I worked with, Deborah Davis, over at Career, so she's retired now, but okay. she was a godsend, and I stay in touch with her still also. Aww. She's was absolutely wonderful. She was so encouraging, and she pushed me, and um, she was in my corner cheering louder than anybody else half the time. I also got the internship with the Journey Forward program through Kaiser, hence through Career Source. Right. And so I started that two months after I was there. I had a full time position, and that was almost seven years ago. So great. I continued to go to school after that for human services because I wanted to keep going and broaden my, my base. And I love Career Source for so many reasons. And so when I, when I, get my reentry clients, that's the first thing I say, you, you need to go there, you need to, you know, get hooked up with those resources, there's so much available to you. And I tell them, if it comes down to it, how they helped me too. Yeah, you're a great example. So that's careersourcerc.com for anybody out there that's looking for those resources. Um, and, you know, again, it, it isn't even, you know, it's not just the employee that benefits from all of these resources, but certainly all of the employers as well. And um, having this conversation today, I like to just highlight, you know, that second chance employment, uh, that the skills required to maintain lifelong recovery are so valuable. And, you know, and they include determination and sharp problem solving and coping skills, grit, resilience, and commitment. And research shows that employees in recovery have actually lower turnover, absenteeism, and healthcare costs than the general workforce. So I always like to throw that little piece in there. We're talking about the resources at, at CareerSource for the 
a potential employee, but the employer can also be helped by being connected to these people who are coming into career source uh, looking for for job search support. Is there any last like tips or information that you want to offer that you know on a daily basis you you work in this field all the time and um, I know you know you you touch lives and have such a supportive uh, personality and. So what would you want to say to the general public who's listening today who, you know, could be a parent who has somebody who's incarcerated right now or a family member who has somebody who's incarcerated? Words of wisdom? What pops into my head first is just don't give up because you never know. It just takes one moment to change someone's life. Yep. You never know when it's coming, but the potential is there every day. Just don't give up on yourself somebody that you love if if they seem like they're heading down the wrong path like i said it just it takes one moment i see it all the time and that's why i have decided to stay in this field because while it's a tough one to be in and and sometimes it can you know you can get discouraged the success stories are so wonderful so thank you thank you for those words um and I just, you know, again, want to put out that if there is somebody out there today who is, is looking for help, looking for support, uh, we have a community resource called 211. And if you don't remember anything else that, that we've um, given you today in terms of websites, careersourcerc.com um, or um, the Public Defender Circuit 19, you can find their website and be connected to many of the resources that we talked about today. But you can also find all of this through 211.org. So if you remember nothing else, you can dial 211 on your phone from anywhere. They don't provide the resources, but they connect you to the resources. So they have people um, ready to talk with you 24-7. So if it's Saturday night and you're deciding that's the moment that you're ready to make a change in your life, call 211 or go to 211.org and um, they will assist you in getting connected. And I'd like to also say um, that you know this show airs the fourth Monday of the month every month and the next show will be March 28th at 7:30 p.m. and I encourage you to tune in to learn more about community services that are available to support people who are committed to moving on and up in their lives. Every month I have uh, different guests that come in and talk about resources in our community and um I thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me.